Happy Pi Day everybody and today we're going to start a series of videos related to real analysis okay and I'm going to start with point set topology of the real line. The point set is a single word. Now set basically refers to the subsets of R including the empty set and the real numbers, the set of real numbers itself and the where point shall refer to the elements or simply the real numbers in the respective set. All right? Okay. Now I'm assuming that you've taken up a course on techniques of proof, mathematical logic, how to write the proofs, set theory, a little bit of set theory, not necessarily axiomatic set theory, but at least some set theory, relations and functions, and, you know, the concepts like supremum and infimum I'm assuming that you have gone through all of that and you've understood all of that otherwise there's no chance that you're gonna understand anything I'm gonna discuss further okay discuss in this series of videos now I'm gonna keep the discussion absolutely uh, basic absolutely elementary discussions okay um, now this is usually the starting point of what you call uh, real analysis, okay? Some real ana analysis courses, like the one I studied. Now this is the book I studied for real analysis during undergraduate classes, okay? This is the book by one of our eminent professors, Professor Dr. Prakash Mani Bajracharya, okay? I recommend you to go through this book. This is an excellent book, excellent book. It is after reading this particular book that I started to understand mathematical analysis, okay? I suggest you to go through this book if possible, all right? Otherwise, I'm gonna list a number of reference books later. All right, uh, okay, to start the point set topology, now the word topology, this is a really vast concept. During our graduate classes, we studied topology for an entire semester, all right? It was supposed to be a two semester course, but for some reasons, uh, it wasn't possible during our graduate years. So basically, um, a simple elementary course on topology for a semester, we studied that. A topology means uh, we're not concerned very much with the geometry and distances, okay? Topos means usually, uh, what do you call it, if I'm not wrong, it's position. And logi means logos, means just study, all right? Okay, now to start with real analysis, you must understand what an open ball means, okay? Now, open balls are simply what you call uh, subsets of real numbers defined in a certain manner, all right? So to define an open ball, we assume that there is some positive number R and some given, num given real number X, okay? We're given R, which is positive, strictly positive, okay? R is positive, and we are given a real number X. Then, we define an open ball of radius X, sorry, radius R, and center X, center if I'm not wrong, center X as something like this. This is the notation for a ball, for an open ball. For a closed ball, it will look something like this. Not parenthesis, you know, those, uh, what do you call those, uh, square brackets? That's what we used to call it, all right? So basically, we define an open ball to be 
open ball of radius r and center with center x to be uh, what you call subset of real numbers such that uh, okay I'm taking the center to be a because I'm using x over here you can use x over here and use y over here it doesn't matter just okay center a and center a and radius r is a set which looks like this okay which looks like this pretty straightforward definition okay an open ball is defined something like this now if we look at this part what can we do we can say that x minus a less than r can be written as is same as this double implication means is characterized as if you have I'm assuming that you've gone through the techniques of proofs and logic which means I'm assuming that you know what this means all right so this basically gives us something like this oh no not like this rather something like this so basically we can write it as something like this okay something like this so if we can write it something like this we can write this set as something like this so we can also say that the open ball with center a and radius r is an open interval non degenerate open interval non degenerate open interval a minus r a plus r okay since r is positive it makes complete sense now if you want a complete proof of this now i'm going to give you a complete proof now okay this was just an informal proof no it wasn't intentional okay it wasn't intentional I've been doing calculus lately I've been doing lower level stuff lately so I'm a bit used to informal stuff nowadays so because this is analysis I'm gonna keep it formal what I'm gonna prove is that now let's write it as result let's not call it theorem okay result B A R is equal to a minus r a plus r okay where the symbols have the meanings like in the definition like we have assigned in the definition okay now in order to prove this let's see uh, let let us suppose that b a r let x be an element of b a r so by definition what we're gonna get is that x minus a is less than r right x minus a is less than r so using the property that I mentioned previously we're gonna get so this will imply that minus r is less than x minus a is less than r isn't it and so we can write it as a minus r is less than x is less than a plus r something like this so basically thus we can say that if x is between a minus r and a plus r we can say that x belongs to the interval a minus r a plus r right so what we have done is that we have taken any element of b a r and we've shown that any arbitrary element of b a r is in this interval so we can say, say that this set is a subset of this set so therefore what we can say is that b a r is a subset of 
a minus r a plus r okay this interval next on the other hand we need to show that the converse also holds so we're going to suppose that now we're going to suppose if you want to take our x it's fine it doesn't matter but just to keep it a little bit distinct i'm going to use some other symbol okay so let's prove the converse part i'm assuming you're taking up a course on logic and techniques of proof before watching this video otherwise you're going to be in a lot of trouble i will definitely cover those topics but not right now all right after all of this is over i'm gonna cover those topics all right i'm assuming for the time being i'm assuming that the ones who are watching this video have already gone through those topics all right okay therefore now we need to prove the converse so conversely so conversely let y belong to this thing be any element of this set then by the definition of this set what are we going to get is that a minus r is less than y is less than a plus r so what does this give us this is going to give us just a minute all right this guy is making a lot of noise all right so this basically simplifies to something like minus r is less than y minus a is less than r so what we can write is that modulus the absolute value of y minus a the absolute value of y minus a is less than r because r is positive the symbols in this result carry the meanings that we have assigned to them in this definition all right okay so we've gotten this therefore therefore what we can say is that by definition of b a r we can say that y belongs to b a r because the modulus of okay let me just use this symbol here the modulus of y minus a is less than r so it qualifies to be inside this set which is basically this set okay thus uh, what do you call y belongs to b a r b a r okay b a r so since y was any arbitrary element of this interval and that interval <coughs> and that element was found to be also a part of this set we can say that a minus r a plus r is a subset of b a r okay now let's see what is going on in here we can say that from this relation and from this relation okay from these two relations what we can say is that since a is a subset of b a is a subset of b and b is a subset of a okay we can say that b is equal to a or a is equal to b a is equal to b from 1 and 2 from 1 and 2 we get b a r is equal to a minus r a plus r which was what we were supposed to prove okay one more thing in these kind of videos in especially in real analysis i'm going to keep the discussion as formal as possible i'm not going to take anything for granted as if possible as much as I can okay I'm not gonna take uh, as long as I can I'm not gonna take what you call anything for granted okay this is real analysis it's not calculus it's not some basic course it's for 
math majors and and the ones who are going to use mathematics in their research this is a foundation course okay math majors must go through this every time at least once in their life they must go through this if you're a math major okay you must go through this all right so i could have brushed it off right here using double implications and all but i just wanted to be formal because this was real analysis okay so this uh what you call <clears throat> open balls okay these this concept not these this concept is gonna be uh, the foundation for entire real analysis okay entire real, real analysis so basically if you don't have uh, if you don't know balls if you don't have balls you're not gonna understand real analysis oh god that didn't come out right basically you need balls to understand real analysis okay all right <laughs> okay that was terrible okay uh let's dive into something else let's dive into another result now i'm not prepared i haven't prepared for this video i'm just doing it randomly it's i think i need to prepare for this these kind of videos uh, i'm not getting a good feeling I don't even remember the sequence that I should follow, the sequence of topics that I should follow. Okay, from next video onwards, I'm going to be totally prepared about what topic to discuss and what not to. Okay, for this video, let's see, whatever that I can. Another result. You can call it theorems if you want or lemma if you can, if you want, but I'm just going to call it result. Another result is that an open ball is an open interval and conversely. Now one more thing I've just decided right now. I'm going to keep uh, the concepts and theorems separate from the examples in these kind of videos. I'm going to update the videos related to examples quite often, okay? I'm not going to stop updating them, all right? But it's not going to be in these, these kind of videos, all right? Okay. An open ball is an open interval, open interval, and conversely, now by open interval is a non-degenerate open interval, is a non-degenerate, let's not simply call it open interval, is a non-degenerate open interval, by non-degenerate open interval, I mean an open open interval of this form okay where a is less than b and and both of them are real numbers so basically i'm not considering these kind of intervals these are degenerate open intervals this is not a degenerate open interval so non-degenerate open interval okay non-degenerate open interval so the first part we've just proven that for the first part, let B A R denote denote an open ball, an open ball with center A, center at A belonging to R and radius r which is greater than zero okay you can use parentheses over here if you want but it's not very necessary all right let b a r b something like this 
then from previous result then we know that we know that b a r is equal to a minus r a plus r this was a non degenerate open interval now this was not infinity or something like that all right this is not an not a degen not a degenerate open interval we've just proven this so that's why i'm using that result over here otherwise you should have proven this in this proof okay all right then we know that this holds which shows which shows us that which shows us that an open ball an open ball is a non degenerate open interval is a non degenerate open interval okay we've proven that an open ball is a non degenerate open interval so it leaves us it suffices to prove that all right it suffices to prove that a non degenerate open interval we have proven this part so we are going to prove this part now all right conversely conversely let uh, a b all right a b b a non degenerate non degenerate open interval open interval non degenerate open interval so what we are going to prove is that we need to show that now we need to show we need to show that ab is an open ball all right open ball so open ball how are we going to show that this is an open ball <clears throat> so basically now i'm going to do is an existential proof okay some kind of an existential proof and i know it just because i've done this thing multiple times if you are a beginner you might have to spend a lot of time constructing a proof of an existential statement okay you might find it within a second you might find a workable construction within a second in a day in a year in a decade it just depends all right now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to prove something okay i'm going to prove something and that something is and this is the thing i'm going to prove i'm going to prove my claim and if i'm able to prove my claim i can prove i can say that i'm taking any non degenerate open interval and showing it showing that it can be written as an open ball of something like this now a plus b by 2 is simply a real number so it can be a center and since this is an interval if this is an open interval a non degenerate open interval what we can say is that a is less than b so basically b minus a is greater than 0 so basically b minus a by 2 is greater than 0 and this can qualify to become a ready yes okay all right i'll give you the geometrical intuition towards this for this proof after i complete the proof let me just uh what do you call prove this thing now let's see let okay let 
x belong to the open ball b plus a by 2, b minus a by 2. Then by definition, then by definition, what do we get? We get modulus of this is less than the radius by definition of an open ball. All right. This is what we are going to get. Next, this can be written as, this can be written as, what can we write? B minus A over 2 is less than x minus b plus a by 2 is less than sorry this is minus now this is not minus b minus a by 2 okay we can write it like this now let me just simplify and write this thing as a minus b by 2 it doesn't matter a minus b by 2 isn't it all right now let's add b plus a by 2 on all sides left middle and right so this will give us a minus b over 2 plus b plus a over 2 less than x less than b minus a over 2 plus b plus a over 2 now if you simplify it these two b's will get cancelled out and these two a's will be get will be cancelled out, will get cancelled out. 2a over 2 means a, we have x over here, and 2b over 2 means basically b. So what we have seen is that, so what we have seen is that x belongs to the interval a, b. Okay, we have seen that, we have just shown that for if we take any element x in this ball, okay, in that ball, then what happens is that, what happens is that, that element will always be, a, be an element of this interval. So we can say b, uh, this ball, this open ball is a subset of this interval. So b, b plus a over 2 b minus a over 2 is a subset of a b now let me mark this as one my writing may not be too formal all right i will try to keep my writing my writing of the proof to be as formal as possible but it may not be formal at all all right okay now let me just clear the upper part of the board now for the next part, for the other part, we have proven this part, now we need to prove this part, okay? I don't know how I had written that claim statement over there, but okay, we've proven this part, we're going to prove that this is a subset of this, okay? This is a subset of this. Now, horrible N, now let Y be some element, be any element of a, B, any arbitrary element of A, B, then what can we write? We can write that A is less than Y is less than B. But what do we want to do? We want to show that Y is a part of this set. Y is a point inside of this set. Y is an element of this set. So let's see. Can we write it as you know, since we need modulus of y minus b plus a over 2, something like this, but y instead of x, we need to show something like this. Let's subtract b minus b plus a over 2 from all the sides. Let's see. A minus a plus b over 2 or b plus a over 2 or whatever 
y minus b plus a over 2 because this is what we need okay this is what we need in what we need to show this is a part of something that we need to show okay instead of x we need y now less than b minus b plus a over 2 let's just simplify this 2a minus a minus b means a minus b over 2 okay y minus b plus a over 2 as it is if you simplify this this is b minus a over 2 now if we simplify this part we're going to get something like minus b minus a over 2 now as b minus a over 2 is a positive quantity okay it was we are we are taking an interval like this this is a non-degenerate open interval so a and b both are what you call uh, a and b both are real numbers and b is always greater than a if it's a non-degenerate interval all right so basically what we can write is that y minus b plus a over 2 is less than b minus a over 2 which shows which shows a b is a subset of b b plus a over 2 b minus a over 2 so from 1 and 2 we can say that from 1 and 2 from 1 and 2 or we can say that from 1 and 2 okay 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 b b plus a by 2 b minus a by 2 is equal to what do you call this interval okay so what we've done is we started with any non-degenerate open interval a b with any non-degenerate open interval a b and showed that it is equal to some open ball okay we started with this and we've shown that this is an open ball this shows this equality basically shows that an open interval any open interval because we are taking any non-degenerate open interval we are not specifying anything we are just assuming that this is a non-degenerate open interval so it is an arbitrary non-degenerate open interval is equal to some what you call a uh, open ball so every non-degenerate open interval is an open ball so basically if we give so this result basically allows us to take open interval as open balls and open balls as open intervals okay both are same thing both are the same thing if you want open ball you can still take an open any open interval and if you want any open interval you can simply take an open ball now regarding that intuition behind behind uh, this weird looking ball over here okay all right let's look at the definition of now let's suppose that this is the real line okay this is the real line the ball basically is centered at C and with radius R so basically what you do is that we're just gonna focus on one dimension one straight line over here okay real line basically what you can do is we can choose the point C and with a let's imagine with a compass take R units and R units okay something like this and this is what we're getting this interval is what we're getting before okay this thing over here this is what we have obtained in the first result and in the second result let's see we had a over here we had b over here the midpoint the middle point is something like a plus b by 2 and the midpoint 
will serve as the center okay midpoint will serve as the center and the distance this distance is equal to this distance since this is the midpoint of this line segment and this distance is b minus a over 2 and this also b minus a over 2 basically this minus this b plus a over 2 minus a is equal to b minus a over 2 and similarly over here so this is an open interval okay an open interval once again let me clarify this a little bit more an open interval is centered at some real number let's say a okay real number some a and taking this as the center we look our units to the right something like this i've taken c over there it doesn't matter and we take our units to the left so basically a is the midpoint of this line segment and these two numbers are these two real numbers are a minus r and a plus r all right because this is our units to the left and our units to the right and on the other hand what we are doing is we're given an interval a b an open non-degenerate interval a b and what we are doing is that we are basically taking the midpoint a plus b over 2 the midpoint as the center the midpoint as the center and since this is the midpoint this length and this length they are equal and they both are equal to b minus a over 2 so we have a similar scenario as in this case okay as in this case so this basically is a ball with centered with the center in a plus b over 2 centered at a plus b over 2 and radius b minus a over 2 okay we're trying to we know if we know this thing this is basically this is quite easy to visualize the definition of an open ball okay and this is something uh, and since we have an open interval we try to convert it to something like this okay and if you don't have this intuition okay you might take some time and you might be able to prove it okay intuition helps but mathematics is not based on intuition certainly real analysis is not based on intuition you need to show everything formally now if intuition helps you must show it formally just like i did okay and if intuition does not help something else will let's say all right i've been already talking for over 30 minutes and i think i should stop right now i wanted to discuss open sets but that's okay and these uh videos are not going to be exam based okay if you want to pass your exams okay in the class in a class in a real analysis class i usually don't take over 30 minutes to explain every single bit of this i'm going to brush up everything within 10 minutes okay i'm going to leave it to the students to see what's going on it's not certainly going to take me more than 10 minutes to complete whatever i've done here in 37 minutes or something like that okay more than 37 minutes around 38 minutes okay 39 minutes all right 39 minutes let's say 40 minutes okay quite good so i think i'll stop here and regarding the books let's just pause for a moment okay yeah, these books okay you can consult these books if you do not have the book i've shown in the video earlier and i suggest you to go through this book much in a particularly with this book okay you can follow this second book these books are really good I'm not suggesting a postal right away because it covers a lot more interesting topics than i'm going to talk about i'm just going to talk about the real line in these videos all right okay that's all about the books and i think i should no 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 yeah, I think I should stop right now. Okay, thank you very much.